Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's a week since Nova, and my brain and my voice are sufficiently recovered <laughs> to record a video about it. Um, Nova was great. I am a little sad because I had fully intended on playing all eight games uh, this year, because I didn't last year, I played five. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the format of Nova is that um, it's eight games, but after five games, um, everyone is split into eight person pods. Uh, and then those each, each of those eight pods plays as a little bracket. So there will be a winner of each pod and the winner of each pod gets a prize. And of course the, the top bracket, the top pod is all people who are 5-0 and or 4-1, and um, and the winner of that pod is the best general, because that will be the one pod that has a, an 8-0 and person in it. Um, so last year, I had bowed out after the first five games. Uh, a lot of people do that. It's, it's kind of a natural place to bow out. Uh, you've played a full normal GT, uh, and if you don't feel like playing the rest, it's you know, not, a, not a huge deal, and it's kind of anticipated that a lot of people will drop at that point uh but i was planning to play all eight and then going into the weekend um i was already super super exhausted before it even started um and you know i've just had things going on in life and i was also working down to the wire to try and finish nagash uh i'll show my list in a second but i brought nagash um i'll probably put that in the title of the video as well um, so I had, I'd been working on a conversion for Nagash because I had this idea, I think it's a cool idea, um, to have Nagash hand of dusting Krondus here, uh, cause I had an extra Krondus head cause I built my kit with Karzai. Um, so I've been working on Krondus here getting hand of dusted. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, but you know, it was just like dust falling down, like his body's already been turned to dust and it's just his head left and Nagash here is giving him the old dusty hand. Um, so yeah, I was working on this down to the wire. Uh, I was very annoyed because my usual, my, my OBR army was like speed painted for a team tournament. Uh, cause I discovered painting my slaves army, a super easy way of painting bone. This is nothing revolutionary. I'm sure to most of you. Uh, but it was basically just, Rathbone white primer and then brown oil paint over it and wipe some of the oil paint off and you know there you have it you've got decent looking bone uh and the green as well like the green spirit soul stuff and all of these is just white primer with green <laughs> oil paint on it uh unfortunately i was out of the citadel right wraithbone primer rathbone primer however you pronounce that um, so i'd gotten some vallejo primer white primer and the Vallejo stuff is just a different formulation than the Citadel stuff, I guess. And it was not reacting well with the, um, the oil paint, which I thinned down with mineral, mineral spirits. Um, and that it was just not reacting well when I was going to wipe off the oil paint. It was just wiping it down to the gray plastic. It was a mess. Um, I, I think my first of the oil application was like five or six days before Nova and like packing things up Thursday. It was still like tacky and not dry and it was just a mess. So I was like, I was just super thrown off going, going into the weekend. And after five games, I was exhausted. My voice was shot. I was, I was just like, I cannot imagine talking over a table to somebody for nine more hours. Um, so I ended up dropping after five. Uh, most of the crew I was with was also dropping after five. So, um, other than Jacob, basically. Um, so we, you know, we got dinner. We went out Saturday, played some board games in the evening. That was lovely. Sunday had a much more relaxed day, you know, poked around the, the convention. There's all sorts of things going on other than, than AOS. Went to a painting seminar. Um, Oscar Lars had a little painting how to paint armies to win, you know, best painted in a tournament, essentially. Um, little seminar, which was fun. So 
had a good had a good weekend but ended up dropping after five um so yeah here you can see <laughs> this is basically my whole list it's not very large um in fact it's tiny my list is was nagash supreme lord of the undead as he is three immortus guard two by five death riders and four morgast harbingers I do not claim that this is uh, at all <laughs> original. Uh, I know somebody went for one with us at a GT a few weeks before Nova. This is kind of the, I mean, this is kind of the Nagash list. Like, you're obviously very tight for points with Nagash at 880. Uh, and then having the Harbingers is just so nice because they have the 3d6 charge. They hit like a truck. So when Nagash brings them back from the dead once per game outside of nine you can still make that charge with the 3d6 um, and it all just kind of works very nicely together um, going into nova i'd played four or five practice games with this list against friends uh, and hadn't lost one yet uh, so i'd been doing well with nagash the list is super solid um, i think it's certainly easily a 4-1 list if, if piloted well uh, which, spoiler alert, maybe I didn't pilot it quite well enough. Um, but yeah, it's just super super solid. You've got the Death Riders to go on the flanks and do tactics. You've got the Harbingers to just delete things and then die and come back. Um, it's kind of just two big threats where, like, you're going to you're gonna yeet the Harbingers into their army. At least this is what I've been doing. I'm sure you could, you know, you could be a little smarter and more tactical, but, you know, you, you throw in the Harbingers, it's kind of like, do you have an answer to deal with this before they eat you? If they're focusing on the Harbingers, they're not focusing down Nagash, who is very hard to kill with the Immortus Guard. He's got, you know, he's on a three up and then a four up ward next to the Immortus Guard, which is very solid and very hard to kill. Um, and he's, you know, with his War Scroll spell, he's giving pretty much everything else in the army a five up ward, um, which is, of course, always nice to have. Um... But yeah, it's kind of, you know, if they're if they're focusing down Nagash, the they're not dealing with the Harbingers, and the Harbingers will just chew through their army. If they're focusing on the Harbingers, they're not focusing on Nagash, the and then Nagash the is going to bring back the Harbingers after they're already alive. So it, it just, it's a very solid list that presents a conundrum to the enemy, which is a little different, you know, it's a little bit of a different thing than a lot of armies present. So it's different problems <laughs> than a lot of other armies. Um, so that is the list. Uh, I did have the Horrors of the Necropolis Manifestation lore. Just super solid. Minus one ward saves from the Shrieker uh, is just brutal against some armies. Um, like the cast, the demon armies with the ward saves. Nurgle is very sad into that. Um, yeah, the other two spells are solid. Um, the, the fighty one. It's a decent amount of fighty attacks, and it might just come back on a 4-up if they kill it. So again, like they're dealing with things and they're just coming back. And then the, um, the Aviarch Sentry was probably the least useful of them, um, but can come, you know, there, there are scenarios where turning, uh, sorry, reducing the control scores of infantry is good. And it's still just a little thing to get in the way and it has some attacks and, you know, it kills one or two things for me. So, and it's Nagash, he's a plus two caster. So you're pretty much always getting all three of your manifestations out. So the list is kind of, in some sense, the list is bigger than it looks because Nagash can very consistently get out all three manifestations on turn one. Um, so you have that going for you. Uh, so yeah, so I don't, hmm, I didn't grab my notebook. I'm just gonna wing it. Um, I'm gonna go light on the details here, I guess. I'm not gonna go through every tactic, um, but round one was against Chris Werder with an absolute manly list. Uh, <laughs> It's just Scarbrand, one of each Bloodthirster, and a Slaughter Priest. Um, this was a game that was just so incredibly winnable for me, and I screwed up in multiple ways, and I forgot one of my own rules that would have helped me, and all of that may have not even been enough, um, except one early important like dice thing didn't go my way. So this was just this was a comedy of errors. I'm not saying Chris is bad or anything, just my list is is should be very good against this um let me go back to the pictures 
Um, this was his scar brand. Um, I think Chris was borrowing this army, um, but whoever's it was, very cool. Good paint job, cool scar brand. Um, I would have loved if the aftermath of this picture was Nagash Hand of Dusting scar brand, uh, but unfortunately it was not. Um, essentially what happened in this game, we deployed... Oh, I should have mentioned one other thing about the... I already closed it. One other thing about the um, Nagash list is it's a one drop, which means you're essentially always going to be deciding whether you go first or second, uh, which is a big advantage and one that I did not take advantage of, I would say, as consistently as I should. Um, so this game, I really should have given him first and he was expecting me to. Uh, but I took first, thinking I could just throw in the Morgasts and kill a Bloodthirster. And then I've killed a quarter of his army turn one, and I'm not going to think too hard about it. Um, and then, you know, he's he's down a Bloodthirster. He's got to deal with the Harbingers sitting in his face. Um, he kind of deployed Scarbrand and one of the other Bloodthirsters in the middle with the Priest, and then the other two out on the flanks to do take the flanks. Um, if I had thought harder, I should have given him first, um, because then he's, you know, he's got to do a tactic. I was like, I don't know, sometimes I know that I should give away the turn, and then I get in my head, and I worry about my opponent doing something that's gonna, like, destroy my army, and I'm gonna be sad, and I'm gonna lose. This, this I did the exact same thing against Emma at a GT at, um, Tables and Towers against her Nurgle. Their Nurgle. Um, not her Nurgle. Um, so yeah, here I was like, I was worried about Scarbring with the 3d6 charge. Um, I was worried about the one Bloodthirster handing out 3d6 charge to another thing. And I was, I don't know, in my head, I was just like, he's going to throw a Scarbrand and a Bloodthirster in and kill half my army turn one. I should take turn one. This ended up being very stupid because like I ran up the two Death Rider units on the flanks to get take the flanks turn one and then it's two bloodthirsters on the flanks i don't know why i thought they were like far enough away but they just both charged in and killed both the death rider units whereas of course if he had gone to take the flanks i could have kept the you know the death riders are were far enough away that he could not have gotten to them turn one and then i get the charge off on the bloodthirsters or at least one if i don't want to send both in and it would have worked out so much better uh and essentially what happened was i threw the morgasts in to whatever Bloodthirster was next to Scarbrand. I stayed out of Scarbrand's um, combat range. And he all out defensed, and I... What did I do? I got 14 hits on 12 dice, because that, you know, tends to happen with the Morgasts when you have Empowered Natterate on them, so you're doing double hits on fives and sixes. Um, he was all out defensed, and the, the biggest issue here which would have changed everything, is that I forgot that Morgasts have plus one rend against monsters. Morgasts have anti-monster rend. And I completely forgot that. And he made a bunch of five up saves, and then he made a bunch of five up wards, and I ended up doing like 10 or 11 damage to the Bloodthirster and completely and utterly failed to kill it. Which, even, even forgetting the anti-monster rend average i should like easily kill it but it's just it's so painful ted uh adams after the game i was talking and he was like what happened and i was like oh i didn't kill the bloodthirster he made a bunch of five up wards and he was like all right five up saves he was like well how did how do you have a five up save against ren three and i was like what do you mean ren three and he he just he just watched my face fall in horror as i realized that i had forgotten my rule um so yeah, so I didn't get the Bloodthirster. His turn, he's, Scarbrand smokes the blood or smokes the Morgasts. So I've thrown away 540 points for, for nothing. Then he gets the double, and he just, it just it all went downhill very fast. He tabled me. It was it, it, it was a 20-0, I think. It was either 20-0 or 19-1. It was he just you know he tabled me after that. So this was just a comedy of errors, big mistakes on my part just from square one maybe i needed some caffeine at that morning i don't know chris well played i you know fun list <laughs> but man that that was, that was a rough way to start the morning um 
And yeah, I had one chance. Nagash like lived through the first turn against one of the Bloodthirsters or Scarbrand or maybe whatever. Nagash gritted up once and lived. By the way, this is the other side of Krandus. I very much like how this turned out. Um, so yeah, Nagash lived through the first assault and had a chance to hand of dust Scarbrand and failed. So like I get you know if that had gone if I had hand of dusted Scarbrand I would have still had a chance with Nagash and the Morgasts. Um, and, but but as it was I just didn't have enough after that because <laughs> uh, he got Nagash you know and then yada yada downhill. Um, this was not one of my games. This was just a picture of a lot of angry Croxagoras murdering my friend and his blood letters. Um, I don't know why those are in there. That is just a view of the convention hall. Um, I think it was 170 people. So it was the largest AOS fourth edition tournament so far in the world, which is awesome. This is the judge staff table. Um, I've just got a quick video panning around. As you can see, lots and lots of nerds playing Warhammer. Glorious. Uh, let's see. Then I just I have I was I was bad at taking pictures of my games. Um, so I've just got some pictures of some fun stuff in the cabinet. Um, so this the, the the painting competition here is not associated directly with the AOS tournament. Nova, if you don't know, is a huge convention with tournaments for lots of different games and then um the capital palette is the uh, painting competition so there was just a bunch of cool things in the cabinets for that that everyone could see um on a whim i submitted um something myself which was a uh, source scarvet on an agrodon anyway yeah i just took some pictures of cool things i liked so here we go um, and apparently, I know I have a picture of my Scarvet in here somewhere, but apparently it was not there. Uh, so round two, I faced Nurgle, as you can see here. Um, so I faced the two friends out for the day list, <laughs> which was Rodigus and a Great Unclean one, along with a couple units of Plague Bearers, unit of Plague Drones, uh, 10 Blight Kings, and Rotmire Creed. And I looked at this list and I said, okay, this is great. I have a chance for redemption. This is another army that my list is very good into. The Morgasts. Now I will remember they have an extra rend against these big monsters. Maybe Nagash will have another chance to hand of dust a giant 500 point great unclean one. You know, I was I was like, I, I have a chance at redemption here. Um, <laughs> so I didn't, you know, I didn't. Um, oh my God. What is the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? not kick my own ass and like bite my bite myself in the i i i can i'm just blanking on this idiom whatever i didn't screw myself over this game i pulled my head out of my ass i played better um so yeah here you can see this is um this is like a turn or two in am i i feel like i'm seeing some things backwards Oh, no, there we go. There's Rodigus. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, crisis averted. You can see this was like, I think this might have been like Feral Foray, whatever. It's a six mission map, or a six, six objective map. Um, and yeah, you can see he's got Rodigus and the Blight Kings over on this flank, the Great Unclean One, Plague Bearers, Plague Bearers over here, and then the, um, where was the Rotmire Creed? Oh, that's Rotmire Creed. Ah, okay. So it, at this point, I think I had killed um, a Plague Bear unit that was in the middle here, blocking up the middle, and was ready to go get other things. Um, these Morgasts, turns out 3d6 charge is real good. These Morgasts were like over here, and I was just kind of hoping to get like, it was probably like a nine, eight or nine inch charge to get into the Plague Bearers over here. So I was kind of planning to just like go into these Plague Bearers, take this point, be happy with that, and then deal with the Great Unclean one the next turn. But I hit like a 14 or a 15 on the charge, and I was like, oh, I can just I can just get over this terrain and into the Great Unclean one. And I was like, I might as well do that, because this is what the Morgasts are for, is killing big monsters, right? Um, 
Unfortunately, you know, the bone tithe streaker was down here. It would have been <laughs> would have been adding insult to injury if the bone tithe streaker was already up there to turn off, you know, minus one of the word saves. Um, but as it was, yeah, like I got in to the great unclean one. I think I may have left him on a couple wounds that first round, but like he didn't do really much to the Morgasts after that. Um then yeah, he, he at at the, at this point he was basically like, I need to kill Nagash, or I'm I'm screwed. Um, I don't know if that was the right call, but that's the one he made. Um, one thing I'll also just say the Blight Kings very slow, so I'm just like keeping the Death Riders safe distance from the Blight Kings. I hold this point already there. I'm just kind of if he's sending them around here, I'm just basically delaying <laughs> with the. Uh, the Death Riders, but as it was, he ended up sending, uh, you can kind of see easier here, um, he ended up, he like backed up the Rottmeyer Creed and was like, I just need to send everything into the gash um, and try and kill him. So that was his plan. I got a, re I redeployed in a gash because I figured if I could back up into like this space, he would have less frontage to get things into the gash and have less attacks. Um, so I got a two inch redeploy and kind of backed up a little bit. And it basically ended up, he got Rodigus in, and then the Blight Kings, to stay coherent, they had to take up too much space, basically, for um, for the Purple Sun to also get in. So he didn't get in the Purple Sun, which was a big deal, because I'm saving more things. Obviously, eh, this isn't rocket science. Um, so <laughs> this is a really terrible, terrible picture, because you can't see the Blight Kings back here, that angle. Um, but you can see on his all-in turn against the gash, the um, whatever shooting he did did like five wounds to the gash, and I was very worried. And then I think Rodigus did like single low single-digit wounds, like one or two. Uh, and then the Blight Kings did zero. So I was like kind of worried the gash was gonna die, and then he didn't even get bracketed, and I was just like, oh, oh, friend. It's a bad time. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> uh, then, you know, more gas clean up, unclean. I, I basically got the great unclean one and Rodigus. The Blight Kings are going to be sitting with Nagash doing nothing. Ooh, not what I wanted to do. Um, so from there, it was it was pretty much just clean up and scoring out tactics and stuff. Um, so yeah, much better game for me. Again, it was a list I was very good into. Another lovely opponent. Uh, thank you, Scott, for the game. So 1-1. One, one. Not, not a completely disastrous day one. Hooray. Um, again, this is my friend Travis talking out a game against the evil ghosts. We all hate the spooky ghosts right now. Um, I believe he managed to pull out the win. Um, I don't know, maybe I took this picture mainly to point out that there were a... Um, there were a lot of Night Hunt armies there, and a lot of them were were pushing the three color <laughs> minimum real hard. Um, you know, there was a uh, you, know, you know, there's there's some white primer on these, and some black primer on these, and some uh, some some metallics for some weapons, <laughs> and some people are, you know, they they wanted to play the filth and uh, needed to get it on the table. Um, so anyway, this was uh, this was the guy I submitted. Um, I was I was working, like I said, down to the wire on the gash. So I had no illusions that this little guy was going to win anything. I think if I had had two weeks to work on him before the competition, um, before the convention, perhaps <laughs> maybe I would have thought I had a chance. But as it was, I I just kind of I wanted to submit something and have something in the cabinet um, and just be one of the cool kids. Um, so yeah, that was my entry to Capital Pellet. Um, I think Seraphon's going to be my next army. I'm, I'm not fully decided, but that's, that, that, this was kind of the test piece for my next army. So we will see if that pans out. Uh, this was game three against, no, it wasn't. Did I? I'm sorry, Scott. I think I... Yeah, game three uh, against Scott Dealman. I completely forgot to take any pictures. 
apparently. I even asked him. I remember asking him. I, I, I man, do I? Hold on. We're, we're pausing this. Did I forget to upload these pictures from my phone to the Google Drive? Is the question. I mean, I'm, I'm probably not going to do it now if I did, but I just for my own sanity, I want to check and see. Mm, no, I think I, I think I was just, uh, yeah, I think I was just bad and forgot. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I, I know, I, I remember distinctly telling Scott that I have a little YouTube channel and I wanted, you know, I usually take some pictures and go over my games. So, oh, sorry, I didn't get a picture of all your beautiful dinosaurs. Um, I was super into the list. It's great. It's a bunch of dinosaurs. What's not the love? It was a slan. Uh, let's see, six Agrodons, ten wrapped on hunters, and then it was a Starseer with five, five, and ten wrapped on chargers, and then it was a Skink Star Priest with two by five hunters of Wanchi, which I think are amazing. Hunters of Wanchi might be one of my favorite units in the game right now. Um, because minus one d6 to your charge, one of the best debuffs in the game. It's amazing if you hit it. It's a three up. It's not that hard, uh, and you can do it in the enemy phase as well with your counter shoot. So it's amazing. Also, you don't even have to do a wound. It's just target with their shooting attacks. Um, so yeah, I told Scott I was like, oh man, I love your list. This is like close to what I want to run with a um, Seraphon list. So I was stoked to play it. Um, I did end up getting the win. Um, I just did a, I don't know, every, everything in my army was just kind of gritting up and being hard to kill, and I just chewed through an awful lot of dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, I got, I basically got the charge off with like the Morgasts and some Riders, I think, into a couple of the like Charger units and Hunters, and then just like grounded out and then by like by the time the agrodons came in you know they they were kind of the only hitty piece left if i'm remembering right he didn't he didn't get many charges off like he didn't get charges off with the wrapped on chargers for the extra damage um and yeah then i just i i grounded out and was tougher than the dinosaurs were um wow that is that is such an unenlightening game summary i'm just for that i'm gonna go i'm gonna go get my i'm gonna get my notes <laughs> scott deserves a better game recap than that all right turn one i gave him the turn he sees the center he got six points that turn so i think think he did I think he got seized the center but didn't have more objectives or maybe he got enough objectives but I countercharged and stopped seized the center I think that maybe was it I think I countercharged and stopped seized the center um then I did marked for the grave and got something whatever I had marked for the grave one of the dinosaur one of the wrapped it on units I'm sure and I got eight uh, he did take their land with, I think, probably some Hunters of Wanchi in my turn and got 10. Uh, and then I did take land as well, I believe, with some Death Riders and got 8. So at that point, we were we were tied at that point. And then turn 3, turn three was just kind of the tipping point where, like, I kind of just killed the rest of his army. And, like, he went in with the Agrodons and didn't do enough and then... You know, I was, I basically killed the Agrodons back. And at that point, he didn't have an army left. Um, and we called it and talked it out. So I won that one 42 to 16. Um, so yeah, day one, I had one just complete blowout loss and two like very big wins. I think, I think against Nurgle might have been a 19 or an 18 to one or two point win. And then this was a 17-3. I believe um <laughs> so big swings on my you know 
I my list isn't very big. There's not much in it, so it's kind of like all of it dies or none of it dies. I guess I don't know. All of my games were big wins in One Direction. Maybe that's just fourth edition. Maybe it's just the list I was playing. I'm not sure. Um, so continuing on to games that I do have pictures of. Um, game four was against the bad guys, against John Tooley, um, with Slaves to Darkness. I was, I was a little bit worried about this. Um, he had a Gaunt Summoner, two by 10 Nurgle Warriors, six Corn Varengard, uh, the Sorcerer Lord, two by five Knights of Nurgle, and a Myrmidon. Myrmidon, wow, I cannot pronounce that. Um, the Myrmidon's the only thing I really, I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure about the Myrmidon in this list. Maybe he just had the model and didn't have another model. Um, but like, I would even, this is my list. <laughs> Cause I do like the list, it's not bad. Um, I think this for me would be a, um, I would probably make this the Demonic Lord on the Steed. Um, Cause at least that can keep up with like the Knights and kind of operate with them and has like the thing to trigger the Knights. The Myrmidon just doesn't have synergy with anything. And like, I don't know, it's not that scary for Deathmonger. Um, and having the Conqueror's Crown on something mounted to get where you need it, I feel like would be better. Um, so what happened to this game? I was a little surprised that he put the he put a unit of warriors up in the tower from the Gaunt Summoner, uh, and I thought he was going to put the Varengard up there. Maybe he was worried that like I would take first and somehow get the Gaunt Summoner, and then he wouldn't be able to bring down the Varengard. I don't know. Um, but essentially what happened was, this is like the aftermath of my turn one. Um, I'd had Death Riders, I had Death Riders down here and the Morgasts and like then Nagash and other Death Riders on the flank. So I gave him turn one. He did take the flanks. Um, he wasn't very well set up for take the flanks. Um, I think the knights did it on this side, but then on the left side, he ended up sending like the Varengard over to the flank to take the flanks. So the Varengard were kind of like out of position from the get go because they went over here and take the, took the flanks. I feel like the knights maybe would have, I mean, not maybe, the, the knights would have been the better choice to go get take the flanks and then come back to the middle. And then he had, <laughs> you're, you're gonna, you're gonna immediately know why, why this was bad news. Um, so he, let's see, this was this little hut was a place of power, and then he's got the chaos terrain. So you can you can kind of be in the middle of them, three inches from each, both, and get plus two to cast, which is nice um, with the chaos terrain. So he had the gaunt summoner sitting in between here, <laughs> conspicuously near where these morgas are now sitting. He had the chaos sorcerer lord here, also conspicuously where these morgas are sitting. Then he had the orgoid myrmidon uh, towing this point, also conspicuously near where this unit of four more gas is sitting in this picture <laughs> so in his turn one he got the gaunt summoner spell off to launch the um the cast warriors out within seven of me and he basically threw them in to the death riders hoping to hold me up and i spent my two cp to counter charge the Morgasts in uh and he was hoping these nurgle warriors would hold me up for a turn uh, and just kind of pin me into my deployment zone, which usually is a very reasonable thing to hope for 10 Nurgle warriors, Nurgle warriors to do. Um, unfortunately, my four Morgasts counter charging in just straight up demolished <laughs> the Chaos Warrior unit. They, they lifted the whole unit. I did 20 wounds, probably a couple more. And he was just like, oh shit. <laughs> that is not what I expected to happen. I was like, yeah, well, more gas, man. Um, the funny thing was, in addition to not remembering that more gas have anti-monster run in game one, I also forgot all tournament long that the Harbingers can get the um, Relentless Discipline ability once per turn, even if they're not wholly within 12 of Nagash. So again, I was just playing myself at a handicap um, they could have been plus one to wound to cancel out the Nurgle, even if they were not within 12 of Nagash. Turns out they didn't need it. 
Um, or maybe they were just barely still within 12th in the gash. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, his turn one, he throws in 10 Nurgle Warriors. I just eat them with the Morghasts, and he's already down, you know, 200 whatever points. 200 exactly. So he's already down 200 points. And he accomplished nothing except feeding me a unit. And then in my turn, I move up the Morghasts 10 or 12 inches, however far they went. 12 if they were within you know, the range of Nagash. I make like a 12 or something inch charge from, you know, Hirish, which is enough to string out and tag the Gaunt Summoner in combat. So I, I, I you know, I, I hit that charge and I was like, I can just get all three of his characters this turn. I should probably do that. Even if the Varengard come in and kill the Morgaths back, then I can just bring them back and it's fine. And I don't worry about it. So I did that. So I charged in the Morgaths. I got all three of his characters. Um, I did take the flanks with the Death Riders as well uh, for my tactic. So he got 10 turn one. I got nine because um, I didn't hold more. Um, is that true? I think he, maybe he countercharged in the Knights to hold that. No, I, th I think I just didn't out count him. Anyway, whatever. I got nine. I was perfectly happy being down one to get underdog command points. Um, and also this was, <laughs> this was a fantastic turn one for me. It's okay to be down one point. Um, so he went next and he did take their land. So this is, this picture is at basically the start of his turn two, partway through the movement phase. Um, so he had just gone and towed this piece of terrain with the knights, um, to do take their land, uh, which he got. And up here, you can just see the Varengard were just so out of position. This is them moving back around that place of power terrain to try and go deal with the Morghasts. And of course, I got like a five inch redeploy on the Morghasts to just go backwards. And the Varengar did fail to charge. They needed like a nine or a 10 at that point. And they didn't get it. Eh, they maybe, they might have actually needed like an 11 now that I think about it with the five inch redeploy. And they didn't get it. So now the Varengar are just sitting there. The Morghasts are safe hanging out on the middle point. Nagash. And the Immortus Guard are just slowly eating through uh, these knights. It's not good uh, for him. So <laughs> here is my turn. I moved up the Morghasts. Um, I moved the Death Riders to take this point back. And um, he's redeploying. As, as this picture is taken, he is redeploying the... Um, let me move myself. Uh, he's redeploying the Varengard away, but I still got the charge with the Morghasts, so it did not save them. Um, so I did slay, um, yeah, I did slay the Entourage on the Warriors here. There was like one Warrior left, um, cause he had charged the, basically he, yeah. <laughs> he charged the Warriors into Nagash with the Knights, just trying to get some wounds there on Nagash, maybe kill him. You can see here Nagash has 10 wounds, so he got halfway there. Uh, and then I got the Nightmare Predator in, and the Gash just slapped the Warriors real hard. Uh, so in my turn, there was like one Warrior left, so I just did slay the Entourage, and I got 10 points. Um, I probably killed a couple of the Varengard. Um, he double fought, and I think he probably... I think he killed two or three of the Morghasts that turn, um, after I had killed a couple of the Varengard. So his turn, he did slay the Entourage on the Morghasts, which I believe he did get. The the Varengard managed to finish them off. Then I did Do Not Waver. So he got a six-point turn. I got a ten-point turn because he took back... He probably used the Knights to take back the middle piece here. Um, but yeah, then I did Do Not Waver. I probably brought the Morghasts back. I got ten points. At that point, um, I may have even, like... I don't know if I got the Morgas, like the resummon Morgas charge onto the Varengard, but like I'd essentially, I may have charged the resummon Morgas into the knights, into the knights actually. But I, I cleaned up his whole army except the Varengard. They were not going to be able to do enough. Um, he got one more point taking, um, I think he took this point back with the Varengard, but at, at that point it was his Varengard versus my whole army and he was going to die. Um, so we called it after four. Um, 
So yeah, I got that. I got 49 points to 23. So another good sized win for me. So at this point on 3-1, I'm like, all right, maybe I can live the 4-1 dream and then I'll have to play out, you know, the rest of the pods. Yeah, so this is, <laughs> this was the aftermath of, whoop, of that, um, that game. It was just a lot of OBR left and not a lot of slaves, as you can see. Um, I also apparently failed to take any pictures of my last game because that's the last picture in this album. Um, no, it's not. Why is this? There we go. All right, anyway, it's the last picture I have of games. So continuing on <laughs> to the last round. I'm feeling good, I'm 3-1. I get paired into Dylan Theralt. Theralt. Sorry for butchering your name, Dylan. Um, Dylan was also at the team tournament in Massachusetts, I believe, in April, although we did not play. Um, and he was running cities. I had not faced new cities yet. I had not faced the faction pack cities. I had only very minimally faced even the, the army book from um, third edition cities. So I didn't really know what I was go getting into here, and uh, I knew Callus and Toll was like considered really good. So I was like, great, I get to find out what Callus and Toll do. Uh, so he had the Collegiate Arcane Spell Lore, he had the Cron Spine, which he never ended up getting out, which was great because he didn't need it. Uh, and he had Callus and Toll as the general uh, unit of 20 Fusiliers, Toll's Companions, and a unit of Wilder Core Hunters. Then he has the Elf Regiment with the Sorceress, Dark Riders, Drake Spawn Knights reinforced, and Executioners reinforced. And then he's got a Rune Lord with 20 hammers. God damn, this army was hard as hell. <laughs> that is that is all I can say. I I did not know how hard a time this was gonna be going into this. Uh, I got my butt kicked so badly, I feel like I, I can hear for some reason. Some weird ass southern accents coming out of me. I don't know. Um, this was a brutal game. Dylan, Dylan crushed me. I got, I got hard tabled like twenty owed. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. Um, I think that uh, basically everything in his army was killier than I thought it was going to be, and harder to kill than I thought it was going to be. Um, I turn one. I, I gave him turn one, which he was not expecting. He thought I was just going to, like, throw in the Morgast to try and kill something. Maybe that was the play. Maybe I could have thrown them into the Knights and tried to kill the Knights. Uh, or at least cripple them very hard. And that was the plan. So, basically, like, I gave him turn one. He moved up. He did some things. He took take the flanks. Whatever. Um, then I did... I, I basically threw the game turn one because um, I did attack on two fronts where I need to take two of the three um, points back from him. And my plan was I was going to throw the Morgasts off to the left where the Drake Spawn Knights were sitting on a point to murder a bunch of Drake Spawn Knights and take that point back. And then on the other flank, Nagash could just go tag that point, stay as far from the hammers as possible and take that point it was a great plan i should have just i should have just done that plan um this was on also this was on the one where there's two home objectives and two flank objectives and then the middle so there was you know it's the cross of five objectives um his turn he had kind of moved up the hammers screening things out and the fusiliers were behind and the executioners were behind and callus and toll were off being annoying on the flank um so I go, I move up my Morgasts, and I hit like a 15 inch charge on the Morgasts. And I look at the table and I'm like, man, there's a big Morgast sized hole behind the hammerers that I could get into the Fusiliers. And for some reason, I was just like, I am so scared of those Fusiliers sitting behind his army all game, double shooting me every turn, and just like, I was like, I was just so scared of them. I was like, man, I think I just take this opportunity to go in, murder the Fusiliers, 
maybe by some miracle my Morgast survive. Who knows? Um, and and I was like kind of hemming and hawing about it. I was like, uh, I probably don't get that objective because the hammers were gonna pile in backwards into the Morgast because I couldn't. Basically, when I saw that I couldn't like. I, I couldn't get into the Fusiliers without pulling in the hammers, and when I saw that, I should have just taken the charge that I had intended to take onto the Cav, onto the Drake Spawn Knights, and just been happy and gotten my tactic, but my eyes got big, I you know, I hit that big charge, and I was just like, screw it, I'm gonna go into the Fusiliers. He thought I was not even gonna have the damage to pick up the Fusiliers, um, and I believe I killed them like to the wound, so I did kill the whole unit of Fusiliers. And then um, I was like, how many points was that unit? He's like, oh, it's 240. I was like, Excuse me? <laughs> I thought that was like a 320-point unit or something. I don't know. I thought it was worth a little more than that. Um, my, my calculus on this was just totally wrong. Um, I totally flubbed my tactic. I got two points. So I'm down 10-2. And like at that point... You, you can't go down 10-2 turn one. Like, that is just unacceptable. The game was, like, not... Really not salvageable from that point. Um, because he... You know, he piled in with the hammerers. And I think he left one more gas alive on, like, two wounds. So then he had the easiest slay the entourage in the world that turn. He charged in the executioners and did, like... Maybe the hammerers didn't do quite that much. But whatever. He charged in the executioners and did, like, 20 mortal wounds on the charge to the Morgasts which is, like, average for them. <laughs> and just brutalized the Morgas. He got another 10-point turn. And he... Um, this was a game where I really screwed myself summoning... I even said, I was like, I'm going to summon this manifestation, the, the Aviarch Sentry. I didn't really have a place to put it where I, like, wanted it to do something specific. And I was like, I bet this is going to come back and screw me somehow. I probably should have just not summoned this. And, of course, that's exactly what happened. He moved the Dark Riders back and got a charge. You know, he used the sentry to charge the Dark Riders to get onto my back point and also surround um, uh, surrounded Nagash so that I didn't have anywhere turn two to bring back the Morgas on my turn two. Because he had Callus on one side, he had charged the Dark Riders around, he was basically surrounding Nagash, so I didn't have a spot that I could bring back the Morgas fully outside of nine, which was very well played by him. And also me screwing myself with the stupid uh, manifestation that was not doing anything. That didn't need to be there. Um, so at that point, I was like, I was kind of Hail Marying, trying to, I was trying to kill one or two things in the magic, with magic, um, just killing models, like individual models. And he did pull the Dark Rider closest to Nagash. So I was trying to see if I could open up a spot to bring back the Morgast in like not a terrible place. And I couldn't, so like turn two, I just held off on bringing back the Morgas. I was like, I can't bring him back in the most useless place, like way in the back. It's pointless. Um, I may not have even, I maybe, sorry, words. I maybe was not even able to. Um, I think there was a spot, but it was like a bad spot. So I got six points turn two. He goes to take their lands turn three and gets ten points again. So I'm down thirty to eight going into my turn three, and I'm just like. I, there was just nothing to do. I, I just I just got brutalized this game. It was bad. It was bad. Um, one of the other sad things that happened was, you know, the Drake Spawn Knights. I'm like, surely it's better to charge into them and try and pin them and hold them up for a turn than get charged. So I charged in five Death Riders into the Drake Spawn Knights, thinking they're pretty hard to kill. You know, five Riders, whatever. Maybe, you know, I'll probably lose three or four. And he just, like, the, the Drake Spawn Knights just, like, trivially smoked the five Death Riders. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, the, the mounts get, like, plus one to wound or something or plus one attack if they're attacking a unit that is wounded. So one of my Knights was wounded, or one of my Death Riders, rather, was wounded. And they just, like, slaughtered the Riders. It, this game was just, it was just brutal. I did not know what cities did, really. Um, turns out they're really good. The damn hammers, you know, 40 attacks or whatever on, like, 
damage two. The executioners do an average of 20 mortals on the charge. The hammers are also super hard to pick up. They've got like a five up ward from whatever with the rune lord. And then um, I guess the whatever that order is that gives them strike last and a five up ward also does something to the hammers. It makes them minus one to wound or something. So like I was very, I don't know. I, I should have just thrown, honestly, I think I should have put the Morgasts into the Drake Spawn Knights like I meant to. And I also think that um, with with like the Bone Tide Streaker up and a Drain Vitality under the Hammers, um, the Morgasts I think could also probably kill the Hammers. Like, it... it I was just not prepared for this list. I didn't know what to do. I made terrible decisions. Dylan played very well and did not make any mistakes like I did <laughs> and took full advantage of all the mistakes that I made. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was a real rough game. Uh, so I ended up 3-2 and just, you know, I was like I said, I was exhausted. My voice was shot. I had just gotten absolutely brutalized by Dylan and I was hemming and hawing and... Uh, my buddy Nick Jackson was like, dude, just drop with me. We're going to, you know, let's go to Oscar's thing tomorrow. Let's have an easy day tomorrow. Let's, you know, go out to dinner and drink. So I ended up going out, dropping, going out to dinner with um, my buddy Travis. Also dr dropped after five, was planning to from the get-go. Nick dropped. Uh, our friend Gern was there playing MCP. So we met up with him. He came to dinner. Uh, and then Jordan and Jesse, um, who I like. I played League of Legends with Jesse and Jordan. Um, I didn't really know them from back in the fantasy Malifaux days, um, but a lot of guys in my crew know them. So, like, they they were there, so I got to meet them in person. Came out to dinner. was very nice. Um, one of their friends came out to dinner. I'm sorry, I forget your name if you ever listen to this. Um, I think they were playing Kings of War. Um, but, yeah, so it ended up being a nice evening. It was a good tournament. Uh, I just want to talk about the winners. Um, Caleb... Uh, was the only 8-0 with Disciples of Zinch. Caleb is just a monster. Caleb Caleb is just so good. <laughs> and he's been playing Zinch forever. Whether Zinch are amazing or not amazing, Caleb seems to find a way to make them work. So big props to Caleb. Um, you can see there are also a bunch of 7-1s. Tom Guan with his Lumineth, no surprise. Uh, Gavin with the Gloom Spite, 7-1. Obviously two of the best players in the world. Um right there no surprises um michael Roche um had won the pittsburgh tournament i went to uh, with friends a couple months ago uh, and he was playing caleb in the final um on the top table um with a catacross list catacross mortis guard alish cavallos vak Mortian, 10 death riders uh four morgast archai uh, there's been some discussion around the interwebs that basically, you know, with Nagash, you take the four Harbingers because you can bring them back and they have their 3d6 charge. With Catacros, you take four Archai because they're on a three up save base instead of a four, and he can save stack and make them very tough to kill. Um, they also have that nice thing where they're, you know, they can give plus one to cast to your casters, whatever. Um,. Yeah, if you want to hear more about Caleb, go watch the Honest Wargamer video. There's an interview with him there. And then, um, so Caleb was best general, obviously, at 8 0. And then Jacob, uh, with his Filthy Cruel Boys list, actually ended up being best overall because uh, he was 7 and 1 and had a couple best sports scores and good painting and all that good stuff. Um, so, and, you know, also just. Know if he just scored also points wise better than a lot of the seven ones or just those other things put him above. Um, but yeah, Jacob won with his absolutely filthy, gross, <laughs> cruel boys list with all the monster killers, uh, which was Swamp Kala, let's see, two monster killers, two by six bolt boys, a break a boss, a kill bow, another unit of monster killers, another unit of six bolt boys, another Swamp Kala. And three more units of monster killers. This is just a brutal MSU control list, teleporting around, shooting you, doing all the damage. Very cool list and um, very well done by Jacob to go 7-1 and best overall.
Uh, yeah, that about wraps it up for Nova. Um, I was, I don't know, I kind of intended to talk more about just the Nagash list in general, but um, it's fairly straightforward, honestly. Like, like I said, it's just two big threats. It's hard to deal with. Um, he's throwing out potentially a lot of chip damage. You kind of want to get Nagash into the center, so he, his War Scroll spell that he can repeat is Holy within 18, and that's enemy or friendly. Um, so you kind of want to get Nagash somewhere central early on so he can be pinging out those mortal wounds. He can hand out the Drain Vitality. Because um, that's only 12-inch range now. Um, he can be you know, handing out buffs to your other stuff. Um, it's a pretty straightforward list. It's strong. I like Nagash now. It's been a lot of fun playing Nagash. I wanted a list that was kind of simpler, more straightforward. Not a lot of models to, to run around, uh, move around. So yeah, I had a lot of fun with the list. No notes. Nagash is fun. It's a good OBR list. Um, I am. I just finally ordered a Catacross model. I'm very curious to try out some Catacross uh, and give Nagash a little break. Uh, so I'm going to uh, the Fall Retreat in Massachusetts uh, team tournament held by Wicked Dicey uh, in October in like a month and a half. Uh, so I'm hoping to paint up Catacross and get some practice games in with him. Um, but yeah, I'll probably, let's see, I want to make a video, what's coming up? I want to make a video about going to a tournament, just like how to prep for a tournament, what to expect, what should be in your bag. I think I've said this before, but like, I, I think that would be a, a fun and a good video for some people maybe, I mean, honestly, most of the people who know, who watch this channel are probably my opponents who have already gone to tournaments. Um, but just, you know, basically a, a little a little beginner guide to how to have a successful and enjoyable um, tournament experience. By successful, I don't mean winning all your games. I mean being prepared going in, having good etiquette, having good games, um, you know, having the, having the stuff you need. Um, so I want to do that. Um, Caleb, I was talking to Caleb at Tables and Towers at a tournament like six months ago. And he had been talking about wanting to do a video about deployment because that is a thing a lot of people mess up, uh, he was saying, and I agree. Um, obviously, he's one of the best players out there uh, in the world, uh, so I would love to hear his thoughts on deployment. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know if he has a little YouTube channel and wanted to put things there or if I could... <laughs> get, get the Caleb get, get him on here to talk about deployment because that is something... Um, Deployment and the turn, basically the deployment and the turn one decision of whether to give it away or take it is something I messed up a couple times at this tournament and I'm not very, I, I still just have a lot of room for improvement there, basically. I think that's one of the places that like I need to really lock down what my plan is for deployment and what my plan is for turn one in terms of tactics, in terms of knowing, knowing before deployment if I'm going to give it away, uh, and like how to set up to take advantage of either giving it away or taking it. Or even, you know, what I was kind of trying to do one or two times in this tournament was set up such that I could do, basically set up, see the opponent sets up thinking they're going to go first or going to go second, and then do, make them do the opposite and be able to take advantage of that. So there's, there's just so much to unpack with deployment and like that turn one decision. Um, I think it'd be really fun to, to have a video talking about that. So... I'll see what I can do there. I'm sure I'll make some videos coming up about just some practice games and list building. Um, I would love to talk about, you know, a little more about the Nagash list and then about the Catacross and about OBR more in general. Um, because, yeah, my first two games of the edition were with OBR and I was super down on them. I was like, wow, they suck. There's no more healing. They don't come back anymore. I lost, like, the grindy game against, like, Slaves, I think, or something, you know, the first game I played. And now, having gotten, you know, having played more, I understand the addition more now. I understand the OBR better now. Um, they're obviously a very strong army. They're, they're very good. They're in a good place. Um, they're maybe not Lumineth or Nighthaunt, but uh, they're, they're in a super good spot. Speaking of Lumineth or Nighthaunt, obviously there are a couple of both in this top eight. Uh, if we scroll down, eh, 11th is Nighthaunt. 13th is another Lumineth, 14th is another Lumineth. So, like, clearly, Lumineth and Nighthaunt 
are are very strong and need to be taken down a peg whenever the balance patch comes out. Um, but my, one of my takeaways from Nova here, from looking at this, is there is still space, even with a couple armies being a little bit too strong, there is still a lot of space to just win by being very good at the game, right? Caleb, just a monster of a player, went Edo. Tom Guan, Lumineth is very strong. He's a very good player, no surprise. Gavin, Gloom Spite is very strong. I assume he had some rock guts. Gavin's one of the best players in the world, no surprise. Yeah, he's got a bunch of rock guts, squigs, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, you've got this OBR list up here. <laughs> God, okay, Night Hunt, Night Hunt, Lumineth. <laughs> you got slaves. Um, but yeah, you know, daughters, cruel boys, night haunt, sons. It's okay. It's a lot of Lumineth and night haunt. But the point is, there is still room. There's still a lot of room to just. I think there's a high skill ceiling still, right? Like there's still a lot of room to just be better than your opponent and win that way, even if you're not playing the absolute strongest army, the broken stuff, the Lumineth, the night haunt. Um, and to that point, in in my friends and I's Discord chat. Um, where, where is Scooter? We were just, someone was just marveling that, oh, yeah, I'm sure he's his real name. Um, yeah, Scooter Scooter went six and two with the pigs, right? Pigs, we were all like, just today in chat, somebody was like, how did, you know, Scooter went six and two with the pigs. How did he do that? Pigs are bad. Like, they just look like a bad war scroll right now. And here's here's Scooter running a bunch of pigs. But it's an army. He's played forever. He's played it a thousand times. He still just has a very good grasp on the game. He's a good player. And he went 6-2. and two. And that is, like, super... It's a super respectable result. And to me, that it, that's still just saying, like, look at this. A very good player with a very weak army, statistics-wise, still went 6-2. and two. So... Yeah, get out there and play your games. Get better at Warhammer. We all have room to grow and be better. Obviously, a balanced patch is coming soon, but like, don't get too discouraged. <laughs> uh, on that note, it's been an hour. So yeah, go play Warhammer. Enjoy games. See you all.